Hi kids. So we have already finished the theory portion of measurement and experimentation class 9 physics. Today we'll discuss the numericals from exercise 1C consigns physics. Let's do the first sum. What they've given? A simple pendulum completes 40 oscillation in 1 minute. Let us write the data. 40 oscillation in 1 minute. This is given to us. Okay, find its frequency. They have asked for the frequency and find its time period. Very easy. We just need to remember the definition of frequency. The definition of frequency is number of oscillation in one second. We use this logic only. Just look over here. In 60 seconds, 40 oscillation. 1 minute means 60 seconds. In 60 seconds, number of oscillation is 40 oscillation. So in 1 second, how many oscillations? 40 by 60. And this is nothing but frequency. Number of oscillation in 1 second. So that's 2 by 3, which is equal to 0 0.67 hertz or per second you can say. So this is your frequency. Done. The next part. Time period. Now we have a relationship between time period and frequency. Time period is 1 by frequency. Time period is what? Time required to complete one oscillation. Okay. Now time period is 1 by frequency is what? We can take 2 by 3. So 2 by 3. 3 goes up. So that becomes 3 by 2 which is 1.5 second. So that's your time period. Look at the second sum. This was very easy. You know? They have given the time period of a simple pendulum is 2 seconds. So they have given us the time period in this sum. Time period is 2 seconds. Write the data properly. Okay. What is its frequency? They have asked for frequency. What name is given to such a pendulum? Just look over here. We have a relationship. So time period is 1 by F. So we can say that F is 1 by T. So F is what? 1 by 2. So F is 0 0.5 Hertz. Clear? And they've asked what name is given to such a pendulum? Now time period is 2 second. We have already done if the time period is 2 second. It is known as a seconds pendulum. It is known as a seconds pendulum. Clear? Now let us look at the next sum. Now look at sum number 3. Very interesting. I'll just read what is given to us. A seconds pendulum is taken to a place where acceleration due to gravity falls to one fourth. What happened? You have a seconds pendulum, which means the time period is of course two seconds. And suppose the acceleration due to gravity G1 is G. Then we shifted it to a place, to such a place that its gravity falls to one fourth, which means in this case, in the second place, your G2 or acceleration due to gravity becomes G by 4. They were asked, how is the time period of the pendulum affected if at all give reason what will be its new time period? Very interesting. We have this relation. We have done it. Time period is inversely proportional to the square root of acceleration due to gravity. Which means they are related to each other. Which means if G changes, T will also change. And they are inversely proportional. So if G decreases, Time period will increase. How? Let us see. T2 we need to find. Look. The length does not change. So length over here. Suppose the length is L. So over here also the length is L. What is T1? 2 pi. We have this relation. Root L by G. G1 in this case. And what is T2? T2 is 2 pi root 
L pi G2, just divide these two. So T2 by T1, just look over here, 2 pi root over L by G2 by 2 pi root over L by G1. 2 pi, 2 pi cancels and root L, root L will be also cancelled. Ultimately, it will be something like T2 by T1 equals to 1 by root G1 divided by 1 by root G2. Sorry, G2 is over here and G1 is over here. Okay. So that becomes T2 by T1 equals to root this root G1 into 1 is root G1 by and this is root this is G2. Am I clear? So T2, T1 we know. T1 is what? 2 seconds. We will put 2 over here. G1, instead of G1 I am writing G. And instead of G2 I am writing G by 4. So this, this cancels out. 4 goes up. So T2 by 2 is equal to root 4. Root 4 is 2 which means T2 equals to 2 multiplied by 2. This 2 goes over there which is 4 second. So the time period doubles. See, if the value of G decreases, the value of T will increase. Done. Very interesting. Now let us look at the next sum. Now look at sum number 4. Find the length of the second pendulum. They are asking the length of the second pendulum. Which means time period is 2 seconds. This is given to us. At a place whose G is 10 meter per second square. And take pi as 3.14. If I am not wrong. Yeah. Now, we know which relation to use. We have done it. Time period is 2 pi root L by G. That's the relation. So, substitute the value. So, 2 equals to 2 pi root L by 10. Take in capital L. 2, 2 cancels out. So, 1 equals to pi root L by 10. Squaring both sides. So, 1 equals to pi square L pi 10. Which means L equals to 10 pi pi square. Which is 10 by 3.14 whole square and when you solve this you get 1.0142 meter clear very easy we just need to know this relation clear now let us look at the next one number five compare the time periods of two pendulums of length one meter and nine meter so the first case the length L1 is 1 meter. In the second case, your L2 is 9 meter. We need to compare the time period T1 and T2, which means comparison. We, we need to find the ratio. T1 is to T2. That's a comparison, isn't it? Very easy. Look over here. T1 is 2 pi root L1 by G. Am I correct or not? T2 is 2 pi root L2 by G. Acceleration due to gravity does not change over here. In this case, divide these two. So T1 by T2 is equal to 2 pi root L1 by G divided by 2 pi root L2 by G. 2 pi 2 pi and GG will cancel out. So what remains? Root L1 by L2. Substitute the value. So L1 is what? 1. And this is 9. So T1 by T2 is 1 by 3. Which means T1 is to T2 is 1 is to 3. And that's your comparison. Isn't it? The ratio of time period T1 is to T2 will be 1 is to 3. Clear? Now let us look at the next one. Now look at number 6. A pendulum completes 2 oscillation in 5 seconds. Which is given to us. 2 oscillation in 5 seconds. What is its time period? They are asking the 
time period number one and they're asking if g equals to 9.8 meter per second square find the length very easy what is time period the time taken to complete one oscillation now look carefully two oscillation in five second therefore one oscillation in five by two second which is nothing but 2.5 second and this is only the time period the time required to complete one oscillation isn't it done the first part now they're asking the length so we have a relation to time period equals to 2 pi root l by g isn't it substitute the value instead of t i can write 2.5 equals to 2 this is 22 by 7 l length we don't know g is what 9.8 squaring both side so this becomes 2.5 square is equal to 2 square 22 square 7 square and this will be L by 9.8. I've written capital L, so I'll write capital L. Isn't it? So capital L will be 2.5 whole square into 7 square into 9.8 by 2 square into 22 square. Am I correct? Now when you solve this, you get length as 1.55 meter. I'm not solving it, okay? Just simplify it, you'll get 1.55 meter. And that's your answer. So you just need to know one relation. Okay. Now let us look at the next one. Now look at number 7. The time period of two pendulum, two simple pendulum at a place are in the ratio 2 is to 1, which means they are given T1 is to T2 is 2 is to 1. This is given to us. What will be the ratio of their length? L1 by L2, they have asked. See again, we know time period is 2 pi root L by G. Which means if you find the ratio T1 by T2 and G is same, you will get root L1 by L2 because T is directly proportional to the square root of L. So T1 by T2 will be equal to root L1 by root L2. This is what I have written. Or you can take it as T1 equals to 2 pi root over L1 by G. T2 equals to 2 pi root over L2 by G. Divide the two, you will get the same thing. So just substitute the value. 2 by 1 equals to root over of L1 by L2. Squaring both sides. So 4 by 1 equals to L2 by, uh, sorry, L1 by L2. Which means the ratio of L1 is to L2 is 4 is to 1. Simple, isn't it? Just one relation and the sum is done. Now let us look at the next one. Now look at number 8. It takes 0 0.2 seconds for a pendulum bob to move from mean position to one end. What is the time period of pendulum? The concept has to be clear. Suppose this is a rigid support. Point of suspension. There is a bob. We displace the bob to A, then release. Then what happened? It shows to and fro motion. It goes to A. Suppose this is your O, this is your B. It returns back to O, goes to B, then return back to O. Goes on. This is your one complete oscillation, isn't it? From O to A, then A to O, O to B and B to O, that's your one complete oscillation and the time taken for this journey, O to A and O to B is same, remember that. Now look over here, you go from O to A first, you take 0 0.2 second, then you have to return, which means A to O, again 0 0.2 second, O to B, O to B, again 0 0.2 second. B to O, again 0 0.2 second. That's your one complete oscillation. And that, the time which you take to complete one oscillation is your time period. Which means time period is nothing but you add all this or 0 0.2 into 4. 
the zero point eight second. Done. Very easy. Clear. Now let us look at the last one, number nine. They said, how much time does the bob bob of a second pendulum take to move from one extreme of its oscillation to the other extreme? Which means, look over here. Second pendulum we know. Second pendulum. If this is your second pendulum, you know, then it displaces from here to here. Suppose A to B. The time period of a second pendulum is two second, which means one complete oscillation. We can say from A to B and B to A. That is one complete oscillation. This is also one complete oscillation. This is also one complete oscillation from A to B and B to A. So how much time they are taking? It's taking. Two second for this complete journey. So from A to B and from B to A again, it takes two seconds. So one second over here and one second over here. The time taken from one end to go to the other end is same. So time taken to go from one end to other will be one second because the total time is two second. Goes and comes back. That's two second. So only one side, it will be two divided by two. That is one second. Done. Very interesting. So this was the last sum. I hope the numericals are clear. In this video, keep it till here. In the next video, we'll see something else. Till then, take care and be safe.